Okay, it's time for the conclusion. Or what's likely going to be the conclusion. As we are here... For the final chapter. As we finally reveal the culprit. The true culprit. And perhaps the true motives in the final chapter. Of the, vis of the murder on the Marine Express. Ah. My voice is doing better. Still under the weather, but I think my voice is holding out far better than it was last time I played this. So, here's your juice. Uh, thank you, Mr. Johnson. It's made from oysters and shellfish. What? I... Yuck! I'm just joking, of course. Right, I would have liked to know that before spitting it out. I apologize. Don't worry, I'll let this one pass because you were absolutely right. In the end, everything came down to discarding the things that were impossible and keeping what remained. It was a very valuable piece of advice. I'm glad it helped you. There's much to learn from literature. Oh, Mr. Brown? Erica? Well, looks like everyone's here already. I'll leave you then. Good luck with your closing statement. Yeah, we'll need it. If you need anything, please let me know. Thank you. You ready? Oh. Oh, hey, 1564 Studio. Greetings. These are the last messages you will receive, so I want to take the... I want to take this chance to thank you for reading Murder on the Marine Express. Did you find the answer to this mystery? Throughout the journey, three people were assaulted with no clear motive connecting the incidents. The possibility of a serial murder was presented, but according to the train staff, only those from St. Joaquin could get on to the Marine Express. Maybe Christine tried to take her revenge on Mr. Shepard. Maybe it was Katya, who was also a recent victim by Mr. Shepard. And again, why did they kill Miss Marble and make an attempt on Irene's life? Could it be that the murderer is some other unrelated person like Mrs. Queen, who has been hiding all this time? They answered all these mysteries of what the Marine Express is about to be revealed. We encourage you to collect your thoughts before proceeding towards the final answer. That being said, we bid you farewell. Thank you again for reading our original novel. We hope to see you again in one of our next ones. Yeah. It's been a fun, charming little journey. So I think, I think the conclusion that we had come to somewhat here the conclusion we had come to here is that Miss Marble Perhaps it was Miss Marble who assaulted Irene and killed herself when she realized what she was nearly party to. It's weird to stab yourself in the chest to kill yourself, but... As far as who actually killed... I don't know if I have the answer. This is one of those mysteries that's going to make sense once it's all revealed. And honestly, that's... If it comes together and makes sense once it's all revealed, then that's the mark of a good mystery. I'm a little anxious, but I'm ready. We're going to solve this case before the train arrives on land. Right, it's time to close the curtain. Let's go. Everyone's here. Okay, first things first. I want to thank Mr. Brown for letting us organize this meeting despite the circumstances. Really grateful to you for trusting us. I hope whatever you're going to explain justifies this exception. Yes, it will. Those present, I'm, like to clarify, not a big fan of these kinds of detective stagings. All the suspects are gathered and the culprit is pointed out after a long and tiresome explanation. Astrid and I spent all the trip investigating what happened on this train. You think you have the right to know what we found? If you're here, it's because you are or were related to the case at some point, so it's fair that you learn the truth too. The rest of the students will be informed in due time. 
thank you for your courtesy. Alright, now that we've finished with these introductions, let's start with the main event. First, a message of re reassurance that there will be no more deaths or aggressions. The danger is over. Yeah? And how can you know that? We were never in danger, actually. With Mr. Shepard's death, the following events were carried out with very specific targets in mind. So none of, the, none of the remaining people aboard were in danger of becoming a new victim of the mysterious assaulter. You mean these killings were not done at random, then? Not in the slightest. The culprit was very clear about who their targets were. I don't get it. Then what's thinking all three of these victims? That's what we're about to explain right now. Tragic development that could that could have been averted were it not for some obstacles in our way. Looking at the way things unfolded, must admit there's no way we can know exactly how everything happened. So what we're going to present is a summary which best fits the data we've managed to gather. We ask you to listen to the end, okay? Please, go ahead. Let's start with the story, then. I think the best way to understand this case is to go over it in reverse. So let's take Miss Marble's death to, as our starting point. As you probably know Astrid and I were the last ones to see her alive. And the ones who found her body. We have a very solid idea of the time frame in which the murder took place. In just the ten minutes between when we left her and when we came back. Putting aside the fact that this, that this is a very narrow window to dare to kill someone, we confirmed that the crime itself was an impossible one. Since there was a witness in the corridor this whole time. Isn't that right, Haifa? Absolutely. Nobody went in or out after you two. We ran into Haifa on the other side of the corridor, and she was still there when we returned. Even though she was a little far, she would have noticed if someone else went in to kill Miss Marble. Maybe she's the one who did it, and that's all the trick. No, she didn't. I've had no reason, to not, no reason and no opportunity to carry out the rest of the assaults. She isn't on the list of suspects. We can take her at her word. Hold your horses, little mouse. If you're saying that no one went into a room and murdered her, then who on earth killed her? You implied that, that they were already inside when you left. Well, that would be so inaccurate. I'm sure you'll understand if you give it a moment's thought. But then... Are you saying that... I'm afraid that's exactly it. The answer is pretty simple. Nobody, if nobody other than us went in or out of the room, and we are obviously not the culprits, then the other only option left is that she took her own life. It was a suicide. What? That's awful. Poor Miss Marble. A sad incident indeed. She took the very same knife used to kill Mr. Shepard and took her own life, putting an end to this painful string of crimes on this train. That leaves us with a very pertinent question. Why did she do that? Right, Miss Marble wouldn't do something like that without... Wouldn't do something like that for no reason. In this case, the reason was a very... Was a weighty one. And was directly connected with the previous assault. Now let's look over the events related to our friend Irene. As you may know, the murderer tried to kill her with a treacherous blow to the head. But fortunately, they failed. Just by a few inches. She's in a very grave condition. Nurse Joyce told us that the pro that the prognosis is not good. We need to reach land before we'll know if she have any chance of survival. Oh, oh. don't cry, Erica. What's with her? She happens to be a whole lot more human than you lot. Well, let's not go off on a tangent now. Could have spared that remark. The assault on Irene was especially perplexing because it took place in the public restroom, and at night, no less. That was undoubtedly a very odd setting that left us with many questions. Did she stumble upon the killer by chance? Did she agree to meet with them there? What was the weapon used? The only thing we knew was that her body was left there for hours until Astrid found her that morning. Are you sure you're not the culprits? You always seem to be in the eye of the storm. Yeah, we got a lot these last few days. It became some kind of mystery magnet against our will. I would avoid it if I could. Doesn't seem like a very healthy habit. Anyway, as I was saying, this resulted in a sea of doubts. It was not easy to understand. We had to think long and hard to solve the mystery. We did it in the end, right? Yeah. It was all about the... 
So, warte. Had a process that sentence for It was all about pulling the thread out until we. The thread until we finally got the hank out. Let's think about the weapon, for instance. A knife was used for the other two murders, but this assault was carried out with a blunt object. Take that into account, this most likely wasn't a planned attack. Is there anything on this train that could be used as a weapon? Not really, I guess. I should have kicked off the list. They're made of cardboard. I know. The vases in our rooms. We need to find whose room is missing one. Nope, sorry. The vase could be used to hit Irene. And it would break, and we would have found the shards. Then we could have identified the culprit right away by finding the room with the missing vase. Oh, I missed my shot. The loose heart. It took us a long time to guess the right answer. And the answer is... One of the fire extinguishers in the corridor. Huh? It's an object blunt enough to cause a deep wound. The ones in the corridor are small and can be handled easily. We checked all of them. And found one with a small dent and some blood stains. While well, the killer tried to erase any trace of their crime, they didn't manage to do so as thoroughly as they believed. But then there's no way to know who did it. On the contrary, we know quite well. The identity, the identity of the murderer was, murderer was clear once she answered one other pertinent question. What was Irene doing there in the middle of the night? And most of you thought that she was the one behind Mr. Shepard's death back then. But since that was not the case, it would have been very reckless for her to go out of her room that late at night. I couldn't fathom why she would have exposed herself to danger without a weighty reason. Therefore, she mustn't have gone to, mustn't have gone to the restroom of her own accord, but because somebody urged her to. The killer. Exactly. Now think a bit about this. With a murderer happening but a few hours earlier, would you come out of your room to meet with someone requesting your presence at some isolated place? Fat chance. I would tell them we could talk in the morning. Maybe if that person was somebody I trusted. Exactly. That's the key here. Caution would make us, would make us avoid these kinds of shady meetings. If it was somebody we trusted, then things would be different. We'd be a friend in need of advice. I mean, someone instilling safety, like a teacher. No, that can't be right. Are you saying that? Yes. The one who summoned Irene out of the restroom to kill her was the very same person that committed the previous murder. Miss Marvel. Why? That's impossible. She'd never. It is possible. And it's exactly the reason why she killed herself. Drowning in guilt for having assaulted an innocent student. Of course, we have evidence of this. Just before coming here, we got s we s went to the sick room to look for Irene's phone. Confirmed that Miss Marble sent her a message. Giving her instructions to meet with her to discuss a very urgent matter related to Mr. Shepard's murder. I can't believe my ears. Me either. I find Miss Marble harming someone unthink unthinkable. That's a red card. Why would she do something like that? Yeah, that's the unsolved mystery that had been gnawing at me for some time. Motive is what drives action. What gives meaning to this absurd tragedy we lived through inside this train? Motive why Jessica Marble is dead. And the one why Irene ba Baker was critically injured. That motive, a secret concerning several people. It's closely related to a last question we must now we must face at last. Mystery, and the answer that will finally reveal the truth. The question that began it all. Why did Lawrence Shepard die? That is the question we don't know the answer to. So far, so, far, so far, we've talked about how Miss Marvel's death and Irene's assault took place. However, it's time to tackle the final point. And the source of this whole mess. The day before yesterday, just after lunch, someone went into Mr. Shepard's room and stabbed him. Later, Clarice Rossellini, who was right here, found the body when she arrived at the room with the intention of discussing unrelated academic matters. The important thing is that during that period... 
appeared when Mr. Shepard left the dining car and when he found his body. There are very few clues to work with. They're v and they even seem to lead to Irene initially, which is obviously wrong. On one hand, we have the murder weapon, the very same knife that Miss Marble used to take her own life yesterday. The knife, as we checked already. It's a very piece of, it's a piece of cutlery from the dining car, and anyone could have kept theirs after lunch. So there's nothing... that can help us find its owner. However, the fact that the killer used this knife and not another weapon leads us to think that... Just like what... Just like what happened with Irene, this was not a premeditated murder. Let's take this back to the original question, and serves as the unifying thread of this entire case. If this was not a planned murder, why did the culprit feel the urge to kill a teacher, so well respected by his students and co-workers? A role model in the academic in the academy who everybody loves so much. Most of you already know about this, but I will state it anyway. Lawrence Sherrod was a predator who had molested and abused some of the students of St. Joaquin. And also students of other schools. His death was punishment for his deeds. Really? Huh. Tell me impressed. That's meant for you. There's no way to trust them. Well, not all of us are like that. No, not all of you, but all women have to live with the same fear. So please, Mr. Brown, spare us the classic not all men speech. Yeah, that's not the place to start standing up for yourself that I'm not like that. If you're not if you're not like that, then you don't should never have to feel the urge to state that. You just should just keep being you. Be the you that's not like that. And that should shine through. Provided you are actually not like that. You'll never have to You'll never have to say that part out loud as long as you're living it. Just be the you that's better than this, and it'll show through. That's all. We are telling you that your fellow teachers molested young girls with impunity for years. Girls were forced to suffer in silence. Sorry if your ego is taking a blow, but please understand that the topic we're discussing is an entirely different one. Y yeah of course I understand. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. It won't happen again. We think this is quite a serious accusation against a teacher from an elite preparatory school. Even so, some of Mr. Shepard's victims are here on this very train. They can confirm firsthand how true this claim is. I can reveal their names out of respect for their privacy. I have nothing to hide. I was one of Shepard's victims. I want everyone to know what he really was. He tried to force himself on me when I defied him. When I defied him, him, he spread some really nasty rumors about me in an attempt to ruin my life. It worked. Were it not for Matty's support, there's no way I would have been able to bear the humiliations I had to suffer all this time. You're a strong girl, you just needed a little help. Thanks for being so brave, Christine. Ah, he wasn't a victim of Mr. Shepard, too. Ah, got you. It all began with a few casual meetings, but then he started following me everywhere. I started to feel really uncomfortable. I tried to avoid him, but he always found the, was the way to, his way to be alone with me. He gave me his pet toy that he would make my life a living hell if I resisted. Katya, I'm so sorry. Forgive me for not being aware of what you were living through. I'm sorry, too. We had no idea. We should have helped you. Thanks. It wasn't your fault. 
nobody's fault except for the one doing it, that is. As you can see, Mr. Brown, Mr. Shepard was preoccupied with these kinds of extracurricular activities for a long time. But I don't understand. He was doing these awful things. Why didn't you report it to our principal? Didn't you hear? Mr. Shepard had a lot of power within the Academy. His standing would cast doubts on any accusations against him. It would have been super easy for him to wreck the life of his students if they tried to spill the beans. These types of matters are never easy to deal with, regardless. Even though no means no, the fact is that the defense, the defendant is always given more credibility than the victim. That is a sad reality for many people. Gosh, I'm so sorry you've had to go through such a horrible experience. The thing is, this is a very reasonable motive for why Mr. Shepard was murdered. It wouldn't be absurd, not in the slightest, to think that one of his victims decided to take the law into their own hands. Take revenge in the most gruesome of ways. Taking that into account, the list of suspects shortens quite a bit. But it wasn't me! Are you serious? I told you that. Please let me finish. This is certainly shorter now, but that alone doesn't solve the mystery. It's true that both of you fit the profile of the killer very well. I know full well that neither of you had anything to do with the murder. However, Christine provided a valuable piece of information for understanding the chain of events. During the very first part of our investigation, she noticed that the first year, went to Shepard's room just before he was found dead. Christine couldn't identify the girl, but her red jacket gave her away as a freshman. At the time, all the clues seemed to lead to the same answer, that it was Irene Baker. There's no way it was her. Irene stayed in our room. She never made it to the teacher's room. That's what she said. Yet there's no witness to prove it. In fact, I, hard to, I find it hard to think of anyone other than Irene. All the evidence suggests she was, she was the girl Christine saw. And to add to that, Christine is not the only one who saw her. Huh? Mr. Shepard made an appointment to meet Irene in his room. Excuse being that he needed to talk about some of the activities that their class was going to do during and after the trip. I'm pretty sure his plan was to molest her once they were alone. Oof. What he absolutely did not expect was that there would be a surprise guest. Just as he was about to jump into action, somebody entered the cabin. The killer. Of course, this scene was incredibly awkward and diff difficult to explain. The killer let Irene go while they stayed with, while they stayed with Mr. Shepard alone. You know how that ended. A few minutes after they left, Clarice found the body and the chaos spreading throughout the train began. And now that I have... Now that I have to you almost all the facts, I suppose there's no need to reveal... I suppose there's no need to reveal who the mysterious person I'm talking about really is. It's... Miss Marble, right? I'm afraid so. Jessica Marble was the one who murdered Lawrence Shepard. What a sad story. I could never imagine that that's how things went. Actually, it's even worse than that. At the time, Miss Marble didn't know that her colleague was a real degenerate. When she came in, she misunderstood the scene as being the other way around. That is, that Irene was the one jumping, up, jumping all over Mr. Shepard. Just like many of the students of St. Joaquin, she believed the rumor that Irene was in love with him. The situation was baffling enough to make her think it might hold some truth. So when Miss Marble threw her out of the room, it wasn't, it wasn't to protect her, but to get her away from him. Then when they were alone, she killed him out of jealousy, out of spite. She was in love with Mr. Shepard and felt that he'd betrayed that love. She thought that it, if he couldn't be hers, then he wouldn't be anybody's. That makes no sense. If she took her anger, her anger out on Teach, then why did she attack Baker? Why didn't Baker say anything about it? Everything happened so fast. It's possible that Irene was still trying to take in what she'd faced there. I had to think very carefully about how to explain it. She was certainly in a thorny position. Irene was also one of the last people to see Mr. Shepard alive, and she also had a reason to kill him. So anybody would think that she was the culprit. We don't need to say that's exactly what happened. On the other hand, it may be that even knowing that Miss Marble was the murderer, Irene felt conflicted as she was also the one who saved her, and therefore owed her silence. It's clear that this trust was not mutual, however. Miss Marble was still bitter with her after what she saw, feeling elevated by the need of getting rid of an annoying witness who could give her away at any minute. That's why she sent that message to her phone, asking to meet with Irene and talk about how they could confront the situation. Miss Marble had decided already. 
Green posed a grave danger to her, and she had no intention of forgiving what she did to Mr. Shepard. So Miss Marvin was determined to kill her, too. Oh. Now you know the whole story. How what began as a mysterious death became about a fear. Following the second victim, the possibility of a serial killer with a third. But in the end, nothing was done at random. And there was a reason linking all three of the cases. Miss Marvel wanted to redeem herself by paying with her own life. Now that the circle was closed, there won't be any more tragedies. Jessica. Thank you for bringing us together to explain the situation. Just as you said, this is a, was a tragic episode that's all over now. I hope things go back to normal when we arrive on land. Truly an eye-opening speech. Good job, Togawa. You can go back to your rooms. I'll talk to the rest of the girls and let them know that everything is okay now. Just one more thing. You may have forgotten by now, but before starting my speech I told you that we can't know exactly how things truly unfolded. What I explained just then was the most plausible theory. We have with us one last piece of evidence we'd like to inspect in detail. That's something we found in Mr. Shepard's cabin. We want to discuss the meaning behind it with Mr. Brown. We're going to talk with him a little more. While we keep the evidence safe in our room. That's all. That's everything I have to say. It's a painful event, but now we can go back to being normal. I pray that Irene can hold on until we get to land and she can get proper medical assistance. Thank you all for your attention. You did so well, Ranko. Ha, that was harder than I expected. Togawa, thank you for fighting so hard to figure out what happened. Lawrence and Jessica seem like good people, but I understand now that everything can have a dark side. I'm truly sorry that they made you live through such an ordeal. I am your homeroom teacher, but I wasn't able to help you get through this at all. I hope you can forgive me. Don't worry, we know you're preoccupied trying to keep order on the train. It's us who have to thank you for letting us stage this dumb performance. That's for that piece of evidence you spoke of. Yeah, that we'll have to wait a little since we, have to, since we need to do something important first. We can have a little talk about it later. You coming, Astrid? Yes! They're good girls. Yes. Doing their best. Ooh! Hi, girls! Sorry, skip the transition. Hey, what a surprise. Sorry for being in your room. Just wanted to offer my thanks for your efforts in unraveling the mystery. Are you in here for a reason, Lena? Should we be should we be concerned? I let myself lose heart after all that happened and couldn't help at all. I worked so hard at investigating who did that to poor Irene. I feel so useless. Don't say that. These are difficult days for everyone. We understand that you weren't feeling well. Shame things ended up like this. Is Mama doing something like that? I had never seen it coming. I hope Irene makes it through this. Yeah, we'll have to wait a little before we know, once we arrive on land. I'll leave you alone now. See you later. Sorry again for intruding. Don't worry. We expected we'd find you here, actually. Did you find what you were looking for? Huh? What do you mean? Come, sit down here. Aha! This was, a, this was put on. This was a trap. Better if you, if you spare the act. There's no need to continue here, little charade. It was obvious we'd catch you here searching while we were out, since you, uh, were the one who killed Mr. Shepard. I... I don't get it. I have nothing, I have nothing to do with his death. God, it's gonna get worse before it gets better, isn't it? Because... Lena lost her sister in a car accident, so... It was like the last of her family, I believe? So... Would that not make her a prime target to be... Groomed by <laughs> groomed by a sleazeball like Shepherd. You should, you should, you should explain that Miss Marvel was the actual killer. Yeah, look. I was just to call me if this dad with a plausible theory. I'm actually kind of surprised that you believed all that so easily. Didn't you give it any thought? If you go over the story, it's easy to see that it has more holes than Swiss cheese. I guess I should be happy that it worked so well. You're saying that Miss Mumra wasn't the culprit then? The last two incidents were undoubtedly her work. 
She was the one who assaulted Irene and then killed herself out of guilt. I was thinking it, but I didn't get a chance to vocalize it. It does feel odd that she would have killed Shepard directly. The other, two, the other two pieces make sense. Given that she was in love with him, she wouldn't have wanted revenge for his death. And likely called out Irene just to uh, get some sort of direct response here. Force a confrontation with Irene to get some sort of answer. And when that didn't happen, probably lashed out in anger and attacked her. And when she found out that she was... put a girl in a coma, which she probably already felt guilty enough about, to protect child molester and groomer, that's a plausible outcome, that she killed herself out of guilt. Murder Mr. Shepard is a separate case. I told you that Miss Marble burst into the room just as she was about to sexually assault Irene. And she kicked her out and killed him out of jealousy. How could she do that? Supposedly stabbed him in the moment, blinded by rage. With that the case, it makes no sense that she had a knife with her. Clearly it had to have been it had to have been premeditated. But that also that was a weak excuse. Also with a temper like hers, I find it hard to believe that she wouldn't have taken it out on Irene right then and there. Give her a good scolding for what she was supposedly doing. Miss Marble had the entire train trip to make amends with Mr. Shepard. Even if she felt betrayed, she would never kill him out of spite. I'm sure those who knew her better had some doubts about that part. So you're saying, it was me who killed him? But that doesn't make sense either. I had no reason to do so, I was one of his victims. I didn't even know that he was harassing students until he told us. Man, we are friends. The friend, I'll say it again. Don't need for you to keep pretending. We know it all. I don't know what you're talking about. Astrid, bring it, please. Okay. Last night, I had, last night I had a revelation. Thought hard, really hard, until I finally understood some things. The first was that we were looking at the case the wrong way. Up until then, I was sure that everything was the work of a single culprit. Even when Astra su suggested the possibility that maybe that wasn't the case, I rejected the idea immediately. After all, what were the chances that two murderers had gathered in the same place to kill different people? Unless the second one was a result of what the first one did. Having missed that, held up the investigation tremendously. The second thing I learned was that there was something missing in Mr. Shepard's cabin. An item that was there when he first found his body and that was not there when he came back. Miss Marble took that item with her and kept it in her room. I'm sure you had a hunch when you heard me say that we still had one more piece of evidence to check. That's why you came here while we still were still out. Snatch it and dispose of the only clue incriminating you. It's this jacket. A jacket with Mr. Shepard's blood on it. But that's not mine. I'm wearing my jacket. We all have spare clothes. We just have to check your baggage to see if you're missing a jacket or not. Even if that weren't proof enough, we have further evidence pointing to you as the culprit. Let me tell you once again that about the events that took place two days ago in Mr. Shepard's room. This time, the truth about what happened. That afternoon, you went over there while Irene was taking a shower. Your excuse was that you wanted to save seats for us to see the panel at 3 p.m. Nobody actually saw you there. At least not until later. You came in and killed Mr. Shepard. You planned it in advance. You took the knife at lunch when Mr. Brown knocked over the cart. Taking one of that table would have been too obvious. Nobody, nobody was born that had fallen on the floor. Fortunately, you didn't expect to see get your jacket dirty with Mr. Shepard's blood. So you left it there, knowing that no one would find its owner. Then you, then you disposed of the weapon in the bin with the closest, in the closest restroom to your cabin. Is this correct? Rank who I told you. I had nothing to do with it. I didn't even have a motive to kill him. Last time we talked with Madeline, Madeline and, and Christine. We asked them about the girls Miss Shepard had assaulted in the past. Among them was... Margaret Hastings. 
Oh. She was your older sister, wasn't she? She took her own life just two years ago, right before Mr. Shepard transferred to St. Joachim. Is this why you killed him? You wanted to get revenge after he pushed your sister, sister, sister to commit suicide. Yes, that's right. He assaulted her, then spread horrible rumors about her after he got bored of using her as his toy. Madge couldn't go out without feeling the judgmental stares of everyone around her. The pressure she'd been enduring, it, enduring ended up breaking her. Every night she cried in anger and bitterness, knowing she had to keep silent about the harm that bastard did to her family and herself. In the end, Madge couldn't get, take it anymore and took her own life. She told me everything before she did it. But then Shepard was already at another, was already at another school, trying to get away from any accusations against him even though he already ensured the silence of his victims. But I'm sorry that Margaret had lived through such a terrible experience. And your family, too. That's just, that's just a story from the past. It doesn't prove anything. The jacket could be anyone's. Maybe it's Cassius. She also, she also had a direct and plausible motive to kill him. Maybe it's from, maybe it's from some other freshman that you didn't know at all. This were a premeditated murder. There's even a chance the culprit was some student that's not even from my class. Maybe she just got one of those red jackets to mislead the police. You're wrong about me. I didn't do anything. Yesterday we received a useful piece of advice. When you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. And that's what we did. Once we confirmed that the rest of the girls involved had no opportunity to commit the murder, what remained was, as hard as and sad as it may, as it may be, that you were the one we were looking for. Say it once more. Lying is useless. We know everything. This jacket can't be anyone's but yours. No, it's not! How can you be so sure? Why are you so determined to accuse me? Why? Let him we know it was you, and you alone. Because we found this inside the pocket. Huh. This is the pin Astrid gave you when we first got on the train. I gave you the blue... I, I gave you the blue and mama pin. Because you are nice and kind like she is. Everyone had a different one, too. Oh, Astrid. I told you, we know everything. There's no need to keep lying. You have no idea. You know nothing at all. You don't know what I had to go through. You don't know what I did. You don't know why I did it. You don't know anything! Oof. Ah! Ah! Oh. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't want. It's of me, I read and Miss Marble. It's fine. Cry all you need. I've been suffering for a long time. I've been enduring the anxiety of killing a person, a person for days now. On top of that, you had to see how your best friend got hurt. You must be worn out. Lena, please forgive me. It's all my fault. None of this would have happened if I didn't kill Shepard. I wasn't taking revenge. I... I know. It was to protect Irene, right? You knew what he was planning with her. Yes. That morning, just before we arrived, you heard Mr. Shepard making plans with Irene to talk about the class activities. But you knew what he was scheming. That's why you went earlier, to face him and discourage him. I knocked at the door and he was surprised to find that it wasn't Irene. He invited me in. I didn't waste any time. I told him who I was and how much I hated him. I wasn't going to let him do the same thing to my friend that he did to my sister. His answer left me frozen in horror. He said he... He said he remembered Madge. That he had a hell of a time with her. Wow. Holy fuck. That if I wanted him to leave Irene alone, that I could be her replacement. I moved closer and that's when I showed the knife. I threatened him. Saying I'd, I'd attack if he tried anything. He laughed and told him to be careful and that he would be gentle with me. Then he pounced up. Wow! I realized what had happened. It was too late already. Terrified, I leaned forward and stabbed him. 
died almost immediately. There's blood spurting all over my jacket. Scared. I left on the bed and knew I had to flee right away. I took the knife and realized I was covered in blood. I dropped the jacket and ran towards the restroom to dispose of the knife. The rest is just as you said. That means it wasn't on purpose. It was him who assaulted you? That's self-defense. No, it's not that simple. She's the one who had the knife and was acting hostile towards him. Not to mention she had reasons to kill him. We have to study this case very closely to decide how guilty she really is. So are you going to turn me in? It's without a doubt the hardest question I've ever had to face my entire life. I thought about it a lot already. I promise. I hardly got any sleep thinking about it. You're my friend, and I understand the circumstances you are in. And also that you didn't intend for any of the following tragedies. At the same time, I've always been following the mantra that one must have a clear conscience. You're probably bored with it by now. Every act is a consequence. Anytime you do right or wrong, your act will have an impact on other people. And the right thing here is to take responsibility for the result of your actions. If you killed a person, that means you have to take responsibility for it, whatever the outcome. Yeah. Yes, you're right. It has to end like this. But you don't have to do it alone. We will come with you. What? Rank, I forgot to explain something important. I didn't forget. I was waiting for the right time. What do you mean? Look, we... We also killed someone. I don't understand. We talked with Miss Marble about who could have murdered Mr. Shepard. We led her to Irene. With all the commotion and rumors floating around, she was quick to suspect her when she found the jacket. Even so, that was just pure speculation. It was us who convinced her that Irene was the one who visited Mr. Shepard. In the end, she was, show she was so sure about it that she sent a message to meet her in the restroom that night to quietly take her out. And we told her later that Irene had nothing to do with her death. She understood how badly she'd made a mistake and decided to commit suicide. That's what you said before. I told you to ignore that. It's all a fake story to make you lower your guard. The thing is, it was us who pushed Miss Marvel to into acting like that. Indirectly, our words led to her murdering someone and later killing herself. For that, we have to, we have, we have to take responsibility too. But you can't take the blame for that. There's no way that you could have known she would act like that. Perhaps. Intentional or not. The fact is that our reckless attempt at an investigation was part of what caused this ending. Had we stopped playing Sleuth, and we let things flow naturally, none of these events would have taken place. Max had their own consequences, and I want to take responsibility for them. When I explained everything to Astrid last night, she agreed with me. Come on, let's talk with Mr. Brown. Don't worry. We'll be with you, no matter what. Thank you. God, this is a tragic ending. We went to talk with Mr. Brown after that. I told him what had really taken place aboard this submarine train. And his confrontation with Shepard. Our unfortunate mistake. Miss Marble's misunderstanding. The grave but calm face. The sin to confession just minutes before the train arrived on land. After two days of madness. Once we were out, the police began their own investigation. There wasn't much left to do by then. It's about our honest will to redeem ourselves. Astrid and I were absolved of any kind of responsibility. So the effects from our deeds were entirely accidental. Even when we took direct part in the case, so we couldn't be held accountable for any of it. As for Lena, she was sent back to U the USA immediately and placed in judicial custody. The case is still open, but as far as I know, word will be considered an extenuating circumstance during the trial. There was a big commotion among the students when the facts were finally disclosed. Fortunately, the relief of knowing that there was no more danger, the excitement of visiting a new place, was enough for them to enjoy the rest of the trip. A trip they would definitely remember for the rest of their lives. As for Irene, did she make it? It seems those girls found the truth in the end. I'm glad that, like this train, they also reached their destination. Remember, there are lots of mysteries in this world. You are the ones who must figure them out. God has worked to protect, and protect us and make a better future for us. But sometimes they don't act the way they should. 
It's our duty to learn from their mistakes and keep struggling to fix what they messed up. That'll be our challenge when we, when we become part of society. That's why studies are so important. Still a good party every now and then never does anybody any harm. What? I'm not stiff as everybody thinks. Maybe I should loosen up a little bit. I'll make note of that for the future. Watching those two solve the case was truly inspirational. I'll work hard to overcome my block and win any match from now on. But even if I keep losing, I won't fall apart. When things go south, you have to take a deep breath and persevere. Game, set, match. This maiden voyage was another disaster, but there's, there's no way we can recover from this. Who is going to travel in a train where people were murdered? Unless... That's it. The submarine train of death. A thrilling undersea experience. Saw the mystery while trapped aboard a marine train with no way out. I was working on the catchphrase, but that's... Let's leave that to the marketing team. Not finished yet. I'm going to save this project. <laughs> we get what I did to Irene, like, a lot. Hurting other people is never the answer to anything. I learned from my mistakes. I'll never do it again. Now I want to work hard to follow their example and become a good role model. I'm proud of my actions. I don't want to regret what I've done anymore. Also, that gorgeous senior left quite an impression on me. I think I'll have to tail her and learn from her, too. Oh no. Learning from Christine? I'm glad that we could use this incident to form a stronger bond. From now on, we'll care for each other even more. Well, she live through something like that and give her again, Katya. Thank you. I swear I'll be by your side, too, whenever you need. I'll support you whatever happens. We'll always be together. That's why we are the most fabulous. <laughs> the cat packed stronger than ever. I have to say, thanks to the little mouse and her friend. Mr. Shepard died, I thought that our mission was done for. And now I see that finishing where we began is more important than ever. Putting that bastard's crimes. Up to face awareness of the threats most women are exposed to just by being a female. No longer will we have to no longer will we look the other way. It's time to face the problem and I want to be leading the way. This case will really ignite my interest in murder mysteries. I should join the St. Joachim's Mystery Club? I still have a lot of training to do as a ninja, though. The Crimson Moon will shine brighter next time. Whee! I believe in you, Haifa. Thank you for traveling with us at our Marine Express. Please come back anytime to enjoy the underwater views, should, should you have the chance. But next time, please try to make sure it's a more peaceful journey. We'd like our passengers to be alive so they can take pleasure in the beauty of the ocean waters. I'm sad I was left to my role as a teacher. To pull my socks up and help my students when they need it. Even so, I'm happy to know I can trust them. They are some fine ladies. And on, we'll work together and oopsies. Look what I've done. Good job, Frank. Oh. All love to you. And Irene? Irene! Hello, nice to see you. How are you feeling? Feeling better, thank you. The doctor said that I'll be discharged soon. Fantastic, you look pretty bad when they took you off the train. I'm fine now, thanks to you. If I'd received first aid even just a little later, we might not be talking like this right now. So glad I found you in time. I can't believe your love was useful. Your love of restrooms was useful for once. Don't say it like that. Mr. Astro was making the craziest face when I got there. She was crying in ocean with such a funny grimace like this. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> There's no way anyone could be bored with you two around. I'm so happy to see you smile again. We were so worried about you. That's a pretty intense trip. Now that's all come to an end. I hope everything can go back to normal again. Tell me, do you know anything about Lena? There's no definitive sentence yet. It seems they're considering a couple of years in a juvenile detention center. Could have been worse, but this case ruffled some feathers and they took this into consideration or circumstances. So Maddie and Christine presented their report about Mr. Shepard so that the whole truth is known. And that info will be taken into account for the final trial. I hope it turns out well. Will you come with me to see her when I leave the hospital? Of course. We'll go together. Thank you. I'm sorry that Lena had to carry such a heavy weight on her shoulders. She was just trying to save me, and even now she has to keep suffering. Life is so twisted sometimes. Don't worry. 
I'm sure things won't end up as bad as they seem. I hope so. I think it's time we go. We'll come again before you're distar discharged. Take some rest and get well as soon as you can, okay? Sure. Thanks for coming. Love you, girls. See you soon. What a strange feeling. It's just a three-day nightmare to an underwater train, and now it's like nothing happened at all. It's hard to believe we really went through all that. Now that we've solved our first case. Maybe it's time for us to become full-fledged detectives for real. We'll crack mysteries and find murderers with flashy deductions. The Bloomin' Girls will find the answer to any puzzle. I'd rather leave murdered people in fiction, thank you. But you're free to keep having your wild delusions if you want. Don't mind me. Come on, don't be a party pooper. I need you to be my trustworthy sidekick. Why should I be the sidekick here? Do you solve the case? Yeah, but I put in out all the key pieces of information. And just that you never pay any attention to my wit. It's obvious I'm more observant than you. Hehe. <laughs> Ugh, I know you're getting cheeky. You're an absolute pain. Look, some people are gathered there. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's some kind of incident. Could this be our next case already? Let's go find out. Hey, wait, don't run so fast. Darn greedy guts have their long legs. Wait for me! The end. Oh, that wrapped up nicely! Yep, the case is solved. I don't think there's any extras or anything of the sort, but... I say, all in all, I think, I think for the most part, all the pieces were there to be solved. It's, uh... Really, I think they set up a, did a good enough job setting up the, uh... Truth of the Irene and uh, Fisher killings. Uh, it did. Uh, it, you'll say it did very much leave me with the question of uh, who actually. Killed Shepard in the end. In terms of grading, how will they set that up? The answer we got in the end makes a lot of sense, and they pulled a nice swerve on us in the public public explanation. It's publicly tying Fisher. To Shepard's killing in a way that makes sense on the surface, but not if you dive deeper into the logic behind it. It sort of leaves you questioning it. It sort of plants those questions in your mind. And as soon as it got there, and uh, Just, as soon as he went back home and saw Lana there. That ends up planning the question of, uh, oh no, it was you, you came here looking for the thing that we mentioned. But then the rest of what happened there makes uh, made perfect sense. And it works out nicely. It's like, I think they did enough of a job of keeping the answer of Lena just 
just out of the peripheral enough that it makes it difficult to come to that conclusion yourself. But plausible enough that the evidence fits perfectly, honestly. You know it's not uh, Fisher. You know it's a uh, likely one of the girls who was one of Shepard's victims. They did plant the hint of the freshman girl. Hence the jacket. Which, to me, reading this, didn't bring that question back into my mind as much as it probably would normally. That's the key that should get you thinking about this again. The answer becomes it's either one of the suspects that we know was Shepard's victim is lying. But realistically, they only left Katya and Irene. Where there's another victim we didn't know about. Which would have been my personal theory. So the answer wound up, the answer wound up making sense. It was just on the periphery enough to be difficult to guess with any sort of reasonable conclusion, but made sense in the context of the mystery. So I like I like that. It's well a charming murder mystery with some uh, deeper, darker overtones, I would say. So that was quite nice. As we sign off on this, I know that didn't have any decisions or anything of the sort. It was purely kinetic, but it was still an engaging mystery, in my opinion. I hope you enjoyed. I'm gonna say, Mysteries of Ranko Togawa. Again, could be a really charming uh, mystery anthology series. In fact, just earlier this year, the 1564 Studios posted an update on the Steam page that there is a second part of this being developed currently, entitled The Girl Who Wasn't There, which is adding decisions and branching story to this game. And on the scale of with this game being a zero on the story zero on the story branching scale, they're taking the dial from zero in this first installment and turning it up to past ten to twenty. They are promising Decisions that will affect the course of the investigation, moving the plot along six possible routes that could lead to 20 different endings. So, you best believe that when we start hearing more about that, you're going to start seeing this series again. Because you best believe I'm going to sign up for a mystery with six routes and 20 endings. Heck yes. Especially with the... delving back into this charming world. For now, though, we'll step off the train. And until we return to St. Joaquin's, until then, stay classy.